Do you want to go up to the top of the tallest lighthouse on Long Island? Get 360 degree views of the seashore and possibly New York City in the distance? And experience the first thing European immigrants saw when arriving to America? Stay tuned because we're about to show you the Fire Island Lighthouse. This is Magellan. And this is Greyhound. Where we make videos about epic road trips, kayaking, hiking, and other outdoor adventures. Fire Island National Seashore in New York is about 26 miles long and is one of four barrier islands protecting Long Island. On the western end is the Fire Island Lighthouse. To get there, you can either take the Robert Moses Causeway south, head east around the traffic circle at the tower, and continue on until you reach the beach at Field 5 of Robert Moses State Park. During the warmer months, you can take the ferry from Bayshore across the Great South Bay to Kismet which is always fun. If you really want to be adventurous, you can kayak to the lighthouse like we did. Check out our older video above if you want. If you do decide to drive directly to the lighthouse, it's anywhere from eight to $10 per car during peak season, but free from December until the first weekend in April. Head to the very Eastern part of the parking lot and look for a boardwalk through the dunes. From here, you'll take a pleasant stroll for a quarter mile or so before you reach the Fire Island entrance sign and then another quarter mile or so until you reach the lighthouse. The first structure you will see is the Fresnel Lens Building, which houses the original lens from the current lighthouse, as well as examples of other lights. This lens was used from 1858 until 1933 and was then displayed at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia until 2011, after which it was returned here. There is also a timeline display where you can learn about the history of the lighthouse and its lenses. There's almost always a park ranger or a volunteer here to ask any questions you may have. Continuing on is our main feature, the Fire Island Lighthouse, which is actually the second lighthouse built at this spot. The first, constructed in 1826, was 74 feet tall and could only be seen 10 nautical miles away. It was constructed as a response to the hundreds and hundreds of shipwrecks that occurred on Long Island's South Shore as New York became a significant port in the late 1700s. This lighthouse was eventually dismantled and the materials from it were repurposed, not only to construct the second lighthouse, but the stone terrace around it as well. The second version stands at 168 feet, which is not only 50 feet taller than the Montauk Point Lighthouse, but is the tallest lighthouse on Long Island and the first sign of land a maritime traveler will see when crossing the Atlantic Ocean into the area. It can be seen from more than 20 nautical miles away. The lighthouse itself used to be just a cream color, but the black and white stripes, called day marks, were painted in 1892. Each lighthouse has their own unique day marks so that vessels would know which lighthouse they were seeing. Ready to go up the tower? For a fee of anywhere from free to $10, depending on your age, you can get a tour up the steps to the top of the lighthouse tower. The trek itself is 182 steps, and depending on your fitness, you might want to take a few breaks. Don't worry though, your guide will usually stop at the multiple landing spots to explain things or answer questions. These landings have windows where you can peer out as well and check out Fire Island and the ocean from a different vantage point. Eventually, you'll reach the top where you can see the current operating light. The two lights rotate so that every 7.5 seconds you will see the flash. From here, you will head out on the circular deck at the top where you'll get fantastic 360 degree views of the area. Be warned that it's usually windy. On a really clear day, you'll be able to see the Manhattan skyline. But even then, it's still a little tough. I think I can see the Freedom Tower Empire State Building in the distance, but I'm not sure.
You'll then head back down. You can also check out the museum display to learn more about the lighthouse if you like. Our next stop is the boathouse, and then on towards the seashore. It's a brief walk north along the boardwalk from the lighthouse, and you'll know you're in the right place because a whale skull will be sitting at the entrance. Not very often you get to see this, do you? Inside, you'll see a life-saving station exhibit and can learn about the various devices. Sometimes a ranger or volunteer will be here as well. Continuing on past the boathouse, you'll reach the north part of the Barry Island. Here you can relax and have some lunch. Or walk around and check out the area. Once you're done exploring, you can turn around head past the lighthouse and take a path to the most southerly part of the seashore. Here you can walk more east if you like, or head back west towards where you park. You'll get a nice sample stretch of why this area is so beautiful. With the lighthouse in your rear, nothing but you and the sound of waves, what is better than this? We plan on making a video later this summer of an awesome overnight camping trip to Fire Island National Seashore. Let us know if you're interested in seeing that. Otherwise, be well everyone. Hit that like and subscribe if the video was helpful or if you think we're just cool and we'll see you on the next adventure. Mr. Steely Dan and whatever. <laughs>